Welcome everyone to our Southwest Riverside County Economic Development E-Conversations podcast. I am Patrick Ellis. I am joined today by our usual suspects, Mr. Justin Kirk, the city of Lake Elsinore, Kimberly Davidson with the city of Wildemar, Gina Gonzalez with the city of Menifee, Mr. Scott Egejanian, the city of Marietta. And we have a phenomenal guest with us today. Uh, I have the pleasure of working with Leslie on a regular basis in my role as the chairman of the board for the Riverside County Workforce Development Board. We have Ms. Leslie Trainer. Welcome, Leslie. Thank you, Patrick, at all. I am very, very happy to be here today. So why don't we start off before I let the, the, the crew here kind of jump in and start asking questions. Uh, let me ask you uh, to just kind of do a quick little, you know, 30, 60 second introduction of yourself and your role and, and what it is that you do with workforce development uh, in Riverside County. Okay. Um, so my name is Leslie Trainer, and I work for the County of Riverside, where I serve as the Deputy Director of Workforce Development. And uh, I also serve as the Deputy Director of the County's Workforce Development Board. And um, I often tell people and think this, that I cannot believe that I get paid to help people. Um, love my job because I get to take part in transforming people's lives. Um, so we provide services to um, both job seekers and employers in Riverside County. Um, and by doing so, we address the, the whole ecosystem that we think of as workforce development. We wanna make sure that our labor force is skilled and prepared. And we wanna make sure our county employers are strong and resilient. And we see that employers and workers are interdependent. One, one needs the other. The employers need uh, workers that are skilled and can do the jobs that meet the employer's objectives. And the workers need the employers to have those jobs and therefore to, uh, to be strong and to, to grow and to prosper. So I am in the very, very fortunate position of uh, ensuring that both the labor force and the employers are in Riverside County are in good shape. Very good. Uh, so I know that you and I could probably, we could take up, you know, a full hour just talking about workforce development stuff. But uh, the point here is for our economic development gurus uh, joining us today to kind of have a little more conversation with you, obviously from that standpoint of economic development. So I'm going to first turn it over to the person who may or may not have threatened all of us before this got kicked off. Uh, but I will turn it over to Ms. Gina Gonzalez, who always refers to Leslie as the lovely, lovely Leslie Trainer. Leslie Trainer. I always say that. Um, thank you again, Leslie, for joining us. I was wondering, maybe you can share with the collective group. I know that we talk about just overall in Riverside County and pre predominantly Southwest Riverside County, we've been concentrating on industry creation or um, you know, quality job development really for the region. Um, maybe for the group, I know, I know the answer, but I think for a lot of our listeners, you know, how is the county really working to identify certain types of industries that are high paying for our area that we really want to set up the workforce for, and also to attract to our region? I think it'd be interesting for them to know all the great work that the county's already working to attract those types of jobs here locally. Yeah, and great question and definitely an area where traditional economic development and traditional workforce development intersect is, is we want to make sure we have uh, great employers with um, good paying jobs. So, um, you know, we do get our, our funds from the Department of Labor under the Federal Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, which we refer to as WIOA. And so when we get these funds there, you know, it's, it's limited funding. And so the Workforce Development Board um, tries to assess the landscape and focus on certain sectors so that we can allocate our resources in the, in the best way possible. And about two years ago, we came up with a, um, a new strategy to try and make our focus on these sectors more uh, data-driven. So more of an evidence base and figuring out how we're going to um, allocate and prioritize our resources. 
So we now do that through um, the, the identification of what we refer to as demand industries or target industries. And uh, we start with a list of industries by NAICS code, and we run those industries through sort of a filtration process. So the first step in that filtration process is we, we want to know which industries are projected to grow over the next 10 years or so. So we take current data and we project forward. Um, for any of you um, data wonks out, out there, we use MZ. Their, uh, the, their algorithms to project out for 10 years to see uh, what industries are gonna grow. Then of those industries, we wanna make sure that we're focusing on the industries that are growing the most. And uh, that sort of, you know, the most is kind of an arbitrary thing. So we said, okay, over the next 10 years, which industries are gonna be growing by about 10,000 jobs? And so we filtered out any of those NAICS codes that weren't set to grow by those 10,000 jobs. And then we said, okay, well, within those industries that have survived this filtration process thus far, what do the occupations look like in terms of their, their payment, the, the wages? So um, if, we, if we spend money on job seekers to go to training and put them in jobs, we want to make sure that these jobs have good career pathways, that they pay you know, living wages, and so we put those NAICS codes through that, that additional filtration process to see that what on average uh, the wages are for typical occupations in those industries. And then lastly, the last step in that filtration process is we have, at Workforce Development can pay for job seekers to go to training. And that training is very short term in nature, usually 18 months or less, culminating in an industry recognized credential or certificate. So we want to make sure that, for the most part, the, the sectors that we focus on have occupations for which we could skill up the workforce in a relatively short amount of time. And so we filter the NAICS codes through that system. And the NAICS codes that survive are those that we at Workforce Development consider demand industries. We do that for the entire county. And then as you've, you've mentioned, um, Gina, that you know, different parts of the county have have different sub economies. Um, you know, this the southwest area, Temecula, for example, is very different from Indio in terms mm -hmm. of um, some things economic. So we also did um, we went through that process of uh, the additional process for the the regions. So, for example, um, in the southwest part of the county, traveler accommodation. Um, is uh, is a, a demand industry that didn't pop up in the west part of the county. And in the, the east part of the county, crop production is um, a sector that didn't pop up in southwest or west. So uh, we, we kind of try to make sure that we, we prioritize based on data. And then we also acknowledge that there are some differences in regional economies within Riverside County. Very good. Well stated. Uh, yeah. I was going to say, and that's just barely even, I think, touching the actual subject, because I know you guys do a ton more, uh, but that was really, I think, the catalyst probably of what is the basis of what you do uh, behind the scenes, because um, also I was going to say from that, you guys create, like you were telling me on a sidebar about the jobs uh, blueprint that you guys put together based off of that. Right. The, the, so the jobs blueprint um, is uh, what we colloquially refer to as our local and regional workforce development plans. And those are the, the, the roadmap for how we as a workforce development board, workforce development department for the county are going to proceed forward. And it includes an acknowledgement of those demand industries that we want to prioritize our, our, our county and our WIOA resources on those demand industries. And it also identifies populations that we'd like to target. Um, for example, uh, individuals who are justice involved or individuals who are currently receiving um, uh, uh, welfare type assistance or CalWORKs Cal types of assistance. It's beneficial um, for the system as a whole to uh, promote self-sufficiency and uh, put, put those folks in those populations in, into good jobs. Is that a five-year plan or 10-year plan or? 
I believe it is a five, it's a, five. their five year plans and we, uh, they're rolling and we update them about every two years. Okay. We're in the middle of an update right now, which is kind of like shoveling in the middle of a snowstorm because <laughs> we're mid pandemic and we're, we're sort of trying to guess what's going to happen on the other side. But um, in some ways it's a great way to, to plan because we're like, everything is crazy right now. We're in the middle of this um, upheaval and we're not sure what's happening, but we know that going forward, we want to keep our eye on these things. And then in two years, we can come back and, and revisit. Well, that's great that you guys are still doing it during COVID to try and predict, you know, where the market's going to go and where jobs are going to be generated, you know, for our region so that we're on the forefront. And um, I'm glad to know that you have a team behind that already trying to move that needle for us. And you're right, I think, you know, two years, we'll have a better idea of if we're going in the right direction or where we need to adjust again, um, you know, for a lot of what we do on bringing in industry. So I just wanted to say thank you. It's, it's our pleasure. Thank you. And I'll, I'm going to follow up with that. Uh, just so everyone knows, Leslie had shown me um, something that is in the works. I don't know if it's officially been rolled out yet, but um, workforce development has access to these great tools and uh, trying to look forward and, and that idea of not necessarily just looking to find somebody a job, but put them in on the pathway to, to a, a more successful, you know, uh, life with, with a career type of thing. Um, but the programs that, that workforce has and, and the way that you're able to take them and and look at how you might be able to create this path is really exciting and what's coming up within that. Um, uh, can't wait till that kind of gets rolled out and really uh, engaged. Um, but let, let me ask you this, Leslie, and I know I, a couple of the people here have taken advantage of this. Obviously from an economic development side, you know, a lot of the people here are very actively trying to attract businesses to their communities. Um, and, and, you know, we've talked a lot about how workforce development can become a huge tool for, uh, for economic development directors, right? And, and the aspect of how to utilize those uh, services that are available. But I mean, there's some things that are very, what, what would be considered simple, but can be hugely effective in helping a, a business simply from the fact of, you know, putting together, you know, the collecting the resumes and scanning through them all and, and only handing off to those that are actually qualified, things of those sorts. Um, those are huge for a business that may be new to an area. Yeah, I, I think so. And, um, you know, we, we love when our partners in economic development include us as part of their um, incentive and attraction package. It's a win for us because it gets the word out about um, our services and what we do, we, we always say uh, sarcastically and, and begrudgingly that we are unintentionally the best kept secret. We don't want to be. So when you put the word out, that's very helpful for us, but it is a le completely leg legitimate and valuable um, attraction tool, workforce development. We want those good employers here just as much as our, our economic development colleagues do. And um, so it, how I mentioned that our, our funding source is federal WIOA funds. So all of us on this call listening, I'm assuming we, we are all um, above bar with doing our taxes. We're paying into the coffers with our money. The money goes to the federal government. It gets divvied up. And part of it comes back to us under Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act. Those are taxpayer monies. So those monies fund all these programs and services we, we offer, and therefore we don't have to, to charge anything to employers. Um, and so as taxpayers, they should hopefully be taking advantage of all, full advantage of all these programs, which um, include some things that Patrick just mentioned. We can um, help uh, recruit for open positions. Um, we have this huge database of people who are looking for jobs. Um, we are also um, collaborators with the State Employment Development Department. They run, EDD runs the Unemployment Insurance Program, and they're often um, uh, able to blast out uh, job openings uh, to their database as well. Um, and so if you want to have a job fair, if an employer wants to have a job fair, 
Um, BC, before COVID, we were opening our centers to those job fairs and employers love that. Um, even after COVID though, or AD, after disease, uh, we are, are rolling with the punches and we've purchased um, software so that we can have um, virtual job fairs. And what I thought was really creative is we've got employers using our parking lots, the park, large parking lots of our workforce development centers for drive-through job fairs. And um, they're, they're going well, people are, are finding ways so after you have all these recruitment events and hiring events and um, you know, the employer has this huge onslaught of applications, we can also help screen those applications to make sure that, that the employers are spending their very valuable time on only those top contenders. Um, and, and so that is, uh, you know, that's a free service at the beginning that is, is fairly simple but so it could make a huge difference. And, and Patrick, I don't even know if you want me to talk right now about things like on the job training or if you want me to wait. I think it perfectly segued into that section. Can I, can I throw in a quick commercial um, just to say that it's amazing that we, you know, in the city of Marietta, we, we love the service because there's very few incentives left in the state of California. But one is on the job training, um, the money that you supply towards it and the hiring services. And it's not only for really big companies. We've had larger companies come in and need to hire 200 nurses, for example. And then we've had small companies that were just recently, the most recent one was a pizza place that needed to hire their staff. And it didn't matter what size it was, they get the same treatment and, and help and assistance from your department um, regardless. And I think it's a great tool for small businesses as well. So I will, I will open the conversation about on the job training by telling you, telling whoever is listening, the audience, that um, just last week, I signed off on a whole bunch of invoices to pay to reimburse employers for our on the job training program. One of which was uh, an invoice of about $15,000. And that was for about five, five or six months worth. Um, so I'm thinking, wow, this employer is about to get a $15,000 check from the county. How awesome is that for their cash flow? So how did, how did these employers come to get uh, reimbursements from the county? Well, that is uh, specifically through our on-the-job training program, and that is also funded with our federal workforce dollars under WIOA. So uh, again, our goal is to match job seekers or workers with employers and make that a happy, a happy match. And so when employers need to fill a position, Oftentimes it's, it's costly to recruit and to put somebody new in there and to train because it takes a while for that person to be productive and, and start adding to a profit margin, right? Plus, if you're, if you're new or if you're a growing business, you, you may need some help with cash flow in any way possible. And the on-the-job training program helps with both of those things. So on the job training is an incentive for employers to um, hire individuals um, and it reimburses employers for the cost of training a new employee for up to the first 480 hours of work that's being done. Um, while that employee is being trained and we reimburse up to 50% of that new employee's wages. Um, so if you are hiring somebody, if an employer is hiring somebody and that individual um, would qualify under, under WIOA, um, so most of the time if that person is unemployed and you're hiring somebody who is unemployed, um, uh, odds are pretty good they're going to qualify for our WIOA assistance. We can reimburse the employer for up to half of the uh, training expenses that they will be paying in wages to this new employee. And that, defers some of the costs of hiring somebody new and training them up. And it's the real deal. Um, I sign off uh, pretty much every week. I have a stack about this big of invoices I have to sign off. And quite frankly, a lot of them, um, a lot of the employers are repeat because once they find out that it's, uh, it exists, the program exists, number one, and that it's, it's, it's legitimate, it's not a scam. I think uh, some employers question it at first, but once they, they realize it exists and it is a legitimate program, they are addicted and they come, they come back again and again and again. 
um, <clears throat> we'd love to expand the, the type of, uh, of employers that we are assisting. And we happen to have training money right now. Um, so we are hungry for those um, new relationships and to help folks with um, on the job training reimbursements. Anyone else want to jump in? Otherwise, I'm going to ask a follow-up question to that. So I'll throw it out there. Uh, and this is where it kind of gets confusing sometimes for employers. And Leslie and, I, and I've talked about this a lot, so this is why I want to bring it up, is there are multiple on-the-job training programs, correct? <laughs> and, and businesses sometimes get confused because there's ones that, that are the one you're just talking about. There's one that is run through... Department of Rehabilitation. Uh, actually, there, I, correct me, there's two, right? There's one for like the prison to employment uh, type of on-the-job training. And then there's also those for those with like special needs and such. And maybe it's all under one, but um, there are a lot of different programs out there. Um, it can be daunting and, and confusing for a business. And this is um, Obviously, one of my tasks and roles being on the board is to help try to uh, navigate this from a business perspective, um, because it can be overwhelming, um, especially when you just get into the acronyms that are that of Workforce Development Board. Have I used any acronyms yet? Not I, yet. I, no, I, I am very I impressed. I said Okay, I'm trying. But but she said it first, and then she said we owe it afterwards. I'm going oh, to depend pass. on that one. Thank you. Well, this <laughs> is a perfect example of the, the importance for having business at the table during Workforce Development Board activities. Um, you know, myself, being in, in the government sector, I have a, a long history. I actually worked in the private sector and on the business side longer than I've been in government. But you know, once you're in government long enough, you get those government goggles on and you just start speaking in acronyms and you don't even realize it. So it, it is, for that reason, I'm joking, but um, for what Patrick is talking about, making sure that the things we're doing are business friendly and meeting the needs of businesses, it is, it is mission critical that we have businesses in, involved and at the table and reminding us about these things and telling us what their needs are. Um, so one, in addition to uh, feedback that we, you know, we've gotten from Patrick and a couple other members of the Workforce Development Board, um, in an effort to make things as, as business friendly as possible, we, we are in the process of creating um, an employer toolkit that um, gives sort of a, a, a general overview of the services that are available through workforce development and a really easy way to have access to those services. Um, like a single email address or a single pho a phone number or a single website where somebody can go and get um, you know, easy to digest information. So Patrick, not to blow your mind, but I think there's far more than two training programs. But um, there, there's basically, there's two ways to look at for employers to look at training. There's training of new employees, and there's a whole group of, of programs that assist with that. And then there's a training of existing employees, and there are, are programs for that as well. Um, so the, the training of new employees is the, the um, you know, the umbrella that covers the on the job training program that I just described. Um, we also, we at Workforce Development also collaborate and partner with our colleagues at the Department of Public Social Services for one of their programs that is designed to do something very similar. If, if you hire a, an individual who is currently receiving CalWORKs. So CalWORKs is a benefit um, that assists folks who are low income. Those funds are very limited. And so we always try, we at the county try to get um, those individuals employed and do a point of self-sufficiency. That is our motivation. And so we work with employers and, and incentivize employers to hire those individuals by reimbursing um, for the costs of hiring them and for training them up. And in, in some cases, we can reimburse for higher amounts under those programs. Um, uh, for example, right now, DPSS, Pub Department of Public Social Services, is trying to spend down some money. 
And so they're in some cases reimbursing up to 100% of a new employee's wages. If that new employee is uh, currently receiving CalWORKs. The idea though, is that the employer doesn't have to memorize all of this. We, we would like to be a, a one-stop resource so that if an employer contacts us or looks at our employer toolkit, they get an idea of, of these types of things that are available and then we can help walk them through the details. On, on the other side, which is the umbrella that covers training existing employees, there's uh, programs available for that too. You might hear of those referred to as incumbent worker training. Those are gonna become, I think, very important in the future. Um, not only is our region vulnerable to automation, um, but this pandemic, some economists have said, has propelled us five to 10 years in the future in terms of how we're using technology in work. And so um, the ability, the, an employer's ability to upskill their existing workforce to handle these new um, technological uh, pressures and requirements compounded by this, uh, this, this looming promise or threat, depending on how you see it, of automation is going to make in that incumbent worker training piece really Im Im important. And so um, there are programs like, for example, the employer training program, uh, employers who pay, pay the EDD, the Employment Development Department, under that program um, are eligible to participate. That too is, is a pot of funds that empl some employers pay into and they should receive the benefits from it. One of the benefits is that you can use those monies, the employment training panel monies, to have an outside trainer, come, not me, not Leslie trainer, but some outside training provider come into your, yeah, that's right, come into your uh, facility and train your existing employees in, in a way that, that you see fit. You don't, you use the ETP, the employer training panel funds to do that. Um, so there are lots of options, and um, the point is we, we are really trying to get better. Um, it is important to us that we Im improve and provide uh, the, the, the easiest way possible for employers to get to us and to access services. Even if we don't provide those, we want to be able to provide um, information to employers about how to access them. That's remarkable. I was going to say, you know, we always hear there's some businesses that um, are having trouble um, with having some employee employees return to their business um, to provide a service. And this is an option for some folks um, to, you know, to start to tackle a piece of their workforce issue. Um, so that's great to know that there's that benefit there for them. Yeah, agreed. And uh, I think uh, employers in uh, particularly hard hit industries like um, like accommodation and food service, yep. um, you know, where cash flow is a huge concern, the, you know, the assistance, the fifteen thousand dollar check coming from the county could be a big saver. Well, in the, in the workforce, it, you're right. I know people that have cut their hours just because of the workforce issue. They open um, with all of the you know, or the modified opening um, you know even with some of the stay-at-home restrictions or um, whatnot so to your point they'd benefit from the monetary but they'd also benefit with being able to extend their hours as well it, it's just a it's a positive thing all the way around I agree look at Scott he's got a question I don't like to jump, you know, I'm very bad at Zooms because I always jump in right when somebody starts to make a really good point. And so I, I hate to step in and, and step on toes. I find it so interesting that you guys are looking through the next codes and you're trying to make sure that we're, we're isolating the right industries. And we always hear about, you know, certain fields and certain industries that are struggle. Obviously during COVID nursing has become a challenge and has become a real competitive market for the, the hospitals. Um, and, and it's become a challenge when you need it to be the least challenge that it's ever been, right? And so it became a challenge at the wrong time. And I noticed that there's some programs that you guys have for tuition assistance in certain industries to try to help kind of speed up that industry, EMTs, for example. Is there any plans for nursing in the future? 
Um, yes, there, there's plans for um, nursing now. Um, so healthcare is one of our identified demand industries and, and one that we, we want to support. It's, it's one of the, the industries that is thriving in all of the regions. Um, and those, there are great career pathways and there's some really good paying jobs in those industries. Um, so we currently are able to assist um, the, the workforce, what we refer to as job seekers with vocational training that is related to the healthcare mm -hmm. industry. Um, we assist with uh, CNA training, medical assistant training, medical scribe, phlebotomy. Um, we are working on assisting with um, EMT training, uh, both for uh, uh, something leading up to paramedics and also for the firefighter um, profession. So how do we do that? Um, we at Workforce Development, we are not training providers. We have the money and we, uh, we partner with training providers and we provide vouchers so that job seekers take that voucher with them to the training provider of their choice and use up to $8,000 in our federal workforce funds to pay for that training. Um, in some cases, we're also able to assist with um, other work-related uh, requirements like um, uh, tools or um, uh, work-related outfits, steel-toed steel boots, or um, you know, maybe um, goggles or a hammer, um, things of that nature. So anything that really represents a, uh, a barrier between one of our job seekers and gainful employment, um, we try and obliterate that um, where, where we appropriately and reasonably can. Um, so that is how, how we can help individuals who are interested in the healthcare industry right now with, with training and skilling up. Um, and again, just remembering that at workforce development, our, our WIOA funds are primarily used uh, to skill folks up in 18 months or less. And so um, if somebody is interested in um, starting in the medical industry, we actually work with some, some folks who were in the medical industry and were, were uh, front desk workers. They wanted to go behind the front desk and start helping you know, as a, an MA or a CNA. And that's exactly the, the type of training that, that we can assist with. Yeah, that's like a six month process versus you know, a two, three year process. Mm -hmm. Right. So my goal is to upskill Patrick to be a nursing welder engineer. Can we get that done in 18 months and can you fund it? I don't have that kind of skill set. You know that. That's, what, that's why we're going to upskill you. I thought he already did all that. He's a jack the last thing we need is you being a nursing welder. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what that would be. <laughs> Your arm fell off. Patrick will weld it weld back, it. Exactly. Weld it back on. Look, we need, we need nurses and welders. We're going to have to start comboing these. There's not <laughs> enough people to do them all. Oh, boy. The Workforce Development Board does not endorse this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Keep us both out of trouble there. Thank you. So, well, uh, I want to thank you for your time. I know it's been, uh, you, you've shared a lot of information with us. I think that it, it's very uh, helpful for those that we're out trying to talk to and, and encourage to move to this area that there are, there are so many tools available to them and that we're actively utilizing those to to help them as they make that transition to our area so whether it's through you know relocation or expansion um uh, but like you said we definitely too is want to get more information out about workforce development there are so many aspects to it that are beneficial to you know not just the the businesses we're trying to attract but to each one of our communities in making sure that they're all moving forward so uh, thank you, Leslie, for joining us today. Thank you for everything that you're doing. Um, uh, and I want to thank everyone for joining us again this week. Uh, appreciate it. And we'll catch you next time on the Southwest Riverside County Economic Development e-conversations. Bye, guys. <laughs>